How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to Natural Explorers, the Let's Make a Game for 2018. In the last episode, we did quite a few things. We set up our Tinkerer's building, but we didn't actually start the system. For this system, I'm gonna be using Yanfly's item synthesis plugin, and I've changed a few of the parameters to not show the question marks. For this specific thing, a Tinkerer is not going to just throw stuff together and see what happens. He or she's gonna have a goal and then make that item with the required materials. The player will know what they need and what item they're going to create. I just disabled the mask unknown thing and increased text size a little bit. Changed the default sound effect for when you craft something and made a note of the note tags that I need to use. And since I've decided to use that item synthesis plugin, I've had to add a bunch of note tags to appropriate items. For crafting items, I'm adding menu category tinkerer just to categorize certain things. The iron ingot and the wooden log is going to be combined to create a new item called the chest of picks and to make this work you add these note tags to the item you're going to craft if we want to craft this item we're going to add synthesis ingredients and then we're going to type in the name of the ingredients a colon and the number of that item we need i'm going to say we're going to craft the chest of picks which will contain between 10 and 20 pickaxes by consuming an iron ingot a wooden log but in order for this menu to pop up you'll have to do a couple things by default it will show up in the main menu manager. I don't have the main menu manager plugin, but it will show up in the main menu. If you want to disable that from the start, you can go to the parameters of the plugin like I have here and change the show command from true to false. And that'll make it so from the beginning when the player presses escape, it won't show synthesis in there. I'm just going to change this to craft. This is the name that will show in the menu. Enable and auto place. You should keep these to true unless you want it to be on the menu, but grayed out. I don't see the point of that really. Well, I just have it not in the menu until I call a plugin command that will show it. That plugin command will be in the help file here towards the bottom. All you have to do is use a plugin command show synthesis and it will add it to the menu, the main menu when you press escape. At which point we're going to put Devin Scott in a dungeon. <laughs> Sorry, Devin. He's going to be locked away in a dungeon. It's just an idea I had. Somebody mentioned that we should do that with the blacksmith and I think we should do the same thing with Devin Scott. Devin Scott is going to be our tinkerer. So when we finally rescue him, he's going to award us this item. Right now it's just on this spot, but we're actually going to move that so that when we rescue him, we'll get it. But see, I need to do the transfer event and put him somewhere so that's why I don't have it right here right now, so I don't have to do a, a second page. It just works easy as a debug to put it right here for right now. But what we're going to do is put him in a dungeon once we've created it and once you rescue him, you unlock the tinkerer's house and he gives you the item that you need to craft the things. Also, when you unlock the first person who can craft stuff this is the first thing that we've added we're going to do show synthesis so as soon as you have an item that has recipes then synthesis or what we rename to craft will appear in the menu and it doesn't need to be there to have an empty menu until this point we're doing the plugin command of show synthesis at this point we're adding the item we need and the plugin command now this item that you add is going to have to have some note tags so it knows what it is how the synthesis plugin works if you don't already know the player can have an item and that item is like a, a chisel and that will teach you how to craft things with the chisel or like a mortar and pestle and you can craft alchemy potions with the mortar and pestle it will let you grind up regents etc but you need to have that item you can now use equipment too like you can get a dagger that you can use and that dagger could also cut hides into leather or something like that in order to make that work you add a note tag so for the tinkerer's kit I'm setting it to a key item and I'm making it so that you can't sell it will teach you certain recipes it's going to teach you item recipes recipes for the item number 23, 25, 26, and 28. And it will also teach you armor recipes. And I'm using the item core. I think this is an item core note tag that just changes the color to like an orange color. I think this is arbitrary. I think it added a little bit of extra flavor to give certain things colors to distinguish them. This is a crafting kit. And if you have this, then more recipes will populate your menu when you open it up inside the main menu. You give the player this and you use the plugin command show synthesis, and then you can go from the menu and see the recipes. I want to show you, actually before I do that, I want to show you one more thing. I want to go over an idea I had for how to generate the dungeons. Once you rescue this first guy with the, I'm going to make it so that you can enter the first dungeon or the preliminary level zero dungeon without any prereqs. You just go down the staircase and then you can rescue the tinkerer. That will open up this area and then the tinker will give you the ability to use diamonds and gold. So at this point to get diamonds, you'd either have to 
buy them or you'd have to start the harvesting system of like harvesting diamonds out of the mine. I'm trying to tie all of these systems together. So let's take a look in game and then I'm going to come back and show you the main common event for chest of picks and how I set it up because it's going to let you get between 10 and 20 when you consume the item. Let's jump into the game real quick. So right off the bat, I'm going to go to the merchant and buy a few diamonds because we're going to need them. So I'm just going to buy a few for right now. I'm only gonna need one to show you. So we're gonna pretend we went to the preliminary level zero dungeon and found Devin Scott. We rescued him. He gives us the tinkerer's kit and the plug-in command happens. I should have pressed escape before so that you can see that this wasn't on the menu, but it won't be there until you do that plug-in command. Now that we've found the tinkerer, we've got a recipe item, which is our tinkerer's kit. You can see the colors change because of that note tag. We can't use this item directly, but the craft option has showed up on the main menu, which has given us five recipes or items in an armor. So we can craft a chest of picks, bolts of cloth, scorpion anti-venom, and a level one keystone. Let's create the level one keystone. And what you do with this keystone is take it to the ancient stone tablet that's in here. And if you go to this place, it says you see some faint writing on the ancient stone tablet, but you cannot make anything out. I'm prompting the player to use a key item on this thing. So if we use the tinkerer's kit, it's going to say nothing happens. But if you use a, a certain item like the keystones, that will unlock the next level dungeon or teleport you to that dungeon. But I've also created a custom animation I want to show you. Very nice. Okay, cool. So at that point, it would probably teleport you to another dungeon that I haven't actually created yet. I think I've showed you all the new creatures I've created up to this point. The original idea is you'd go down here and you'll go to like the level zero dungeon and you rescue the tinkerer or the blacksmith or both. And then you can unlock other things in town, at which point you'll get the tinkerer's kit and the craft menu will appear, which will let you start doing other stuff. So let's take a look at the chest of picks real quick. We need an iron ingot and a wooden log for that. Let's just go buy those right now. Let's buy five of each. All right. So we'll go to our crafting menu and we will craft five chests of picks. These items will do nothing on their own. They're not in any recipes or anything, but if you consume them, then you'll open them up. You'll get a custom animation that I played with custom sound effects and it creates between 10 to 20 pickaxes that can be used in the mine to get diamonds, which can be used to get keystones to go farther in the dungeon. So it all ties together. Let's use the chest of picks. You open the chest of pickaxes and we get, the chest contains 16 pickaxes. And let's do that again, just to see if we can get different numbers. Open it up and we get 15 that time. What about this time? 13, are we gonna get a 20? 16. And we got a 20. Okay, cool. I've set the item limit using the item core to 999. I don't want to limit the player to being stuck at only 99. You can have almost a thousand of any particular item and then it will cap you out on them. I think that's a little bit better considering we're going to have a lot of some items and they're going to be consumed very quickly. So you might want to have quite a few of them. I've just increased that limit using an item core default, actually. We'll go back to the crafting menu. The bolt of cloth, which is what we're going to be using as a recipe for the furred leather. This is a new armor that I created and you can make it using the tinkerer's kit requiring leather, fox fur, and bolts of cloth. Fox fur is an item you get from defeating the level three enemies, the foxes. You'll need five of those. Leather you get by having a farm, but I'm also trying to think about uh, having another way to create leather. Actually, you'll be able to buy it in the store as well. I think the merchant will sell leather. It's a pretty common item. Yeah, so you can buy leather as well. But the fox fur is a findable only item. So you have to get to the level three dungeon and this is the way that I'm gating it. You can't just immediately craft the best armor. To get the best armors, you'll have to have drop only items that are found in certain level dungeons. In this particular instance, you'll need Need five fox furs, which is a level three enemy, and you'll need to unlock the level three dungeon in order to fight the enemies that drop the items. You're gonna probably want to go up and get the level three armor, and then if there's another one at level five, you'll want to get that one because you're probably gonna have to do a lot of fighting to get the level seven or ten armor and whatnot in that order. So this is trying to not make other items immediately obsolete because of one item being available at the same time and just superior. It'll be set up in tiers, and you'll probably hit every 
every tier and want to upgrade it every tier to make use of every item you create. When you create a new item, you always have to think about balancing. Is this new item going to make other items obsolete? That's okay if it took a while to go from that item to the next item. I've done that by making it so that you have to unlock the dungeons by having particular items. Create the newer level gear, you need items from the creatures that are in those higher level dungeons. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Well, the salvage cloth is found by the level one creatures 50% of the time and you take three of those you can turn it into a bolt of cloth and that is a item that you need for the furred leather but you also need the five fox furs which you don't craft those into anything else you need five regular fox fur as well as five leather which you can get at the farm or you can buy it from the merchant the scorpion anti-venom is it says insect stinger but I'm going to change that matter of fact we can change that right now or I'm ready to jump back into the engine and spring water spring water is another item that we should take a look at it's not available in the game yet but I'm gonna put it on the merchant matter of fact let's just do that right now jump back into the engine let's edit the merchant so that he will sell us a couple of new items that he currently does not sell us we're not gonna let the merchant sell any items that are dropped by enemies. We're going to let him sell spring water for the standard price. And this is a new item that's going to be like your low, low level healing item, but it's mainly used to craft other things. I'm gonna use spring water and apples to make like an apple juice and a spring water and oranges to make like an orange juice to increase the potency of those basic items. If we have a ripe orange that restores 15% MP, uh, I'll make a recipe since we have a cook. Maybe when we activate this, we learn new recipes because of owning the trees and having a cook available. That'll be, if you have multiple stations, you can get crafting recipes. I might do something like that. That sounds interesting, but one way or the other, I'm going to make it so if you combine these two items, you get a better powerful item. But instead of just getting an orange that gives you 15% MP or having spring water that only gives 5% MP, you'll get uh, an item that restores 25 or 50% MP. Or maybe you can use more of those items to make a concentrated version, two oranges, and a spring water to give you the 50% MP. And that'll be the way we handle our recovery items. You don't just buy the recovery items. You buy the low, low level ones and you have to craft the higher level ones. The scorpion anti-venom is, it says insect stinger. I'm gonna change that to the scorpion stinger. The scorpion is the one that uses the scorp poison. His own stinger also has the anti-venom. That makes more sense to me. The insect stinger, I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do with it yet. We'll use something for it as well. I'm not sure we actually need to categorize all of the crafting items. I'm doing that anyway for now, menu category. Maybe this only needs to be there on the items that you're creating, like right here, maybe we do this for menu category tinker. I can't remember. I did this in depth a while ago. I'm sure it'll come back to me. But let's take a look at the common event that's called when we actually use the chest of picks. So here's our common event for chest of picks and you use the item and it calls this common event. It doesn't need a trigger because we're calling it from another avenue. We use the item and it, we get a show text that says you open the pickaxes. We show an animation, make the weight. That animation, I played it in game, but I also want to show it to you here. You open the chest. That's what that looks like when we generate a dungeon. That's what we get from that. All right, so let's take a look at the chest of picks. You call this from another source, so it doesn't need any trigger. At the beginning of it, we're gonna show text saying that we open a chest of pickaxes. It plays an animation on the player, and we wait for that animation. We control variables, and we're gonna control that same rarity check, and we're just gonna go from a random one to 100. Makes it simple and percentage chance to, to calculate and think about. And I'm doing a nested if statement here, which is, yeah, it works. You know, there's many ways to do this, but this works. We're doing a conditional branch that's checking the variable rarity check to see if it's greater than or equal to 95. If it is greater than or equal to 95, then we're going to change the items of the pickaxe. So we're going to give ourselves 20 pickaxes and let the player know that we obtained 20 pickaxes, plural. So let's go ahead and add an S. I just noticed a bug here. And we're going to do an else check on that. Inside that, we're going to copy the entire thing and paste it inside the else handler. And then we're going to change our variables. If rarity check is greater than or equal to 85, then we're going to add 19 pickaxes and the, let the player know that we got 19 pickaxes. Copy paste that, put it inside the else handler, change the variables. If the rarity check is greater than or equal to 75, then add 18 and let the player know that they got 18 pickaxes. Else if, you see what we're doing here? We'll just follow this pattern and do the same thing, reducing the number by 10 and adding an additional pickaxe. You can also change these numbers to work in your game however you want. Once you understand the system, it's just a matter of deciding the percentage chance. I wanted to get between 10 and 20, and this is just the method that I've gone about doing that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
And at the end, we don't need to do another if statement. On the final else handler, if rarity check is greater than or equal to five, then you give them 11 and say that the chest contained 11. On the else handler, otherwise if it's four or less, then we're just gonna give them the minimum amount of 10 and let them know that they got 10. And that's the entire common event for chest of picks. Very simple, easy to understand, I think. How you do that is you go to chest of picks and you, you call the common event from other at the bottom, common event, select the chest of picks or whatever you named it. We craft this item in the crafting menu using the synthesis ingredients like I showed you earlier. That's pretty much it. So you craft the item, you crack open that chest and it gives you pickaxes. Using this method, you can have single items turn into multiple items. Remove some limitations. A simple way to remove some limitations. In this next episode, I'm going to be probably mapping new dungeons, maybe interiors to this. The best of my ability, I might be looking for some new art. I'll probably be using first seed material tile sets to craft the dungeons and caves. I'm going to hide Devin Scott inside the level zero dungeon and hide the blacksmith inside the level one dungeon, as well as a couple of optional chests that you'll have to battle for. There will be no random encounters, but there will be scripted battles like this. They'll be wandering around or they'll block a path or something like that. I'll probably design another enemy at some point, even though I have the first four levels enemies set up decently well, and I'll probably continue to expand upon items that you can craft. But that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed these episodes, please give it a thumbs up to let me know you want to see more of this. If you have any suggestions, put them in the comments below. I read all the comments. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I am at Driftwood Gaming. Big shout out to all my Patreon backers and supporters. You guys are amazing. Thank you for continuing to support me. And if you would like to support what I do and like to see more videos like this, please consider backing me on patreon.com slash Driftwood Gaming. Your support goes a long way and is much appreciated. We would love to have you come hang out on the Discord server. The link is in the description below. Remember to smash the like button, like the smash button, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.